I got the proofs. I got the proofs. The trig proofs. You know who it is. It's Mr. Epstein. I'm coming at you through the internet to work some problems, some proofs. What is a proof? On these problems, they will give us an equation. What is an equation? Equation is two expressions on opposite sides of an equal sign. Stuff like and the goal will be to write one of these expressions, maybe this one here on the left side, manipulate it, change it, use algebra, use tricks, and in the end have the expression change into what was on the right side. Let's talk about your tools, your weapons when you do these trig proofs. One big idea is that we often combine fractions by just making like denominators, because that's how you add or subtract fractions. I see that on a lot of these. The other big ideas are our trig identities. Tan equals sine over cos. When would you use this? You'd use it when on the left side of the equation you see tan, and on the right side you don't see it, you just see sine or cos. How can you get tan out of there? Switch it for sine over cos. We also have the cos squared and sine squared identities. Whenever you see a cos squared, you can always switch in a 1 minus sine squared. Also notice that when you have 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cos squared, you could rewrite this by factoring. This is a difference of squares. 1 is 1 squared. This is sine squared. It's like a squared minus b squared. So you can rewrite it as a minus b, a plus b, aka 1 minus sine x, 1 plus sine x. These are all options for you to experiment, manipulate, and change the expressions, always keeping the other expression, your goal expression, in mind. So let's look at a problem. Oh, it's Tom Cruise. Hello. No. All right, I got one for you. You'll notice the paper is all rankly because it got wet in my satchel because I didn't close my water bottle. So, make sure you do that and you won't look like an idiot like me. But we persevere nonetheless. So here was one I got off an ACE test. Prove that sine over one minus sine x minus sine over one plus sine x, this basically equals, means congruent, to two tan squared. So we restart the problem and we just start with the left expression. Notice we're not changing the equation, we're just taking one of the expressions and just writing it to start out with. So I said, hmm, what can I do here? I see two fractions, let's combine the fractions. Let's get the denominators the same, so we'll multiply by 1 in the form of 1 minus sine x and 1 plus sine x on both sides. When you distribute the sine x up top, it becomes sine x minus sine squared x. Notice I use parentheses, so we distribute the negative. The bottom changes to 1 plus sine x, 1 minus sine x. Hey, we were just talking about that. If you foil it together, you get 1 minus sine squared x. It's a difference of squares. Why 1? Because it's really 1 squared. On the top, once you change this sign here from minus to a plus, we can combine like terms. There's a sine x, there's a minus sine x, it goes away. Sine squared, sine squared, hey, what do you know? You can combine those and get two sine squared x, sine squared over cos squared, that's the same thing as tan squared, and we're done. We reached our goal. Now, in doing this problem, you say, oh, how did you know to do all this stuff? Oh, what happened here? Oh, I also neglected the denominator, 1 minus sine squared. Yeah, this is a crucial step. It became cos squared. Why is that? Because 1 minus sine squared is cos squared. A better question is, how did I know to do that? I knew to do it because I kept in mind what I was trying to create, tangent. And since I looked over here and I had sines on the top, I needed some coses on the bottom. How could we turn this to cos? Oh, it's just the identity. So I was already looking 
for cos in the denominator to get us to tan squared because that was the goal and we did in the end. All right, let's look at one mo. And here's another one I took off a actual trig exam. Okay, this is how, or not trig, but an ace exam. It said part I, show that two tan squared sine squared theta equals one can have the form two sine to the fourth plus sine squared minus one equals zero. So for this one, they actually want you to start off with a full equation, change it, mess with it, turn it upside down, inside out, and in the end, make it look like this other equation over here. So it's a little different. So we start off with the full equation. Okay, It's got tan in it, but our goal only has sine in it. So I said, get out of your tan, and I switched in sine squared over cos squared. Multiplying sine squared by sine squared turns it into sine to the fourth. And since the goal doesn't have cos in it, it only has sine in it, I said this cos on the bottom, time to go away. I'm going to switch you out for 1 minus sine squared. Why was I looking to do it? Because I wanted to only have sine in the problem because that's what's going on in the goal. The final step here, oh, I can get it out of the denominator how? By multiplying the expression by both sides. It cancels on the left side, multiplies by 1 on the right side, and now you notice, hey, hey, it looks very close to the goal equation. We just add and subtract to the left side of the equal sign, and we've done it. Now, I'm going through this fast right now, but when you do these in real time, it takes a while. You have to experiment. This is a problem that might take more time than others because you have to try something out, mess with it, change it. And if it doesn't work out, if the equation or expression doesn't look like the goal, just backtrack and start over, go in a new direction. You have to... Uh, be fresh with your ideas and open-minded. Ask yourself, okay, hmm, this is what it looks like. How can I change it? How can I mess with it? There's no bad idea. Any way you can think with it, you just got to go with it. So on this actual ACE exam, this was just part one of the question. Part two asked us to solve. It said, hey, you know this equation that you started with? Solve it. Now, they like to do this trick on actual ACE exams, and I wanted to mention it right here, in that they often ask you to do a trig proof in part one, and then to solve a trig equation in part two. Here's the thing, though. They don't want you to jump in and actually try to solve the equation they ask about in the part two problem. Instead, they want you to use what you figured out in part one to change the equation of the expression to solve something easier. So you know how in part one we showed that 2 tan squared theta sine squared theta equals 1 is the same as this equation over here? Therefore, if you want to solve this, you can just solve this other one. They're equivalent equations. So the problem says, hey, uh, part two, solve this. And the trick is saying, oh, okay, okay, uh, no. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to solve an equation that I know is equivalent to the original one. And you can stay tuned for part two, where we learn how do you solve such an equation. Peace out, Rainbow Trout.